Simon says subscribe and click on the bell icon to receive notifications. Hey there, it's Cindy again. Welcome back. We're working in QuickBooks for Desktop version 2023. We're in section four right now going through customers and jobs and we've made it down to video number five where I want to talk to you about how estimates work in QuickBooks. Think of an estimate as a quote for a job. If you wanted to create an estimate for a customer, you could do that and then you could actually take that estimate and invoice different items from that estimate, or you can take that entire estimate and send an invoice to your customer for 100%. If you don't need to use the estimate feature in QuickBooks, then you can skip these four videos to talk about estimates and head on down to video number nine, where it talks about invoicing customers for products and services. Let's head on over to QuickBooks now and I'll show you how to get started with estimates. If you're looking at your home screen, you're going to see in the customer section, this icon that says estimates right over here to the left. If you do not see that, that means you didn't turn it on in your preferences. Let me just review where you go to turn that on. Go back to the menu and click on edit, and then you'll see preferences. You wanna make sure on the left that you're clicked on jobs and estimates, and under the company preferences tab, you're gonna see the options for estimates right here. You do want estimates, and yes, you do want progress invoicing as well. Once you've told it yes for both of those, click OK, and that estimate icon will appear on your home screen. One thing I want to point out before I click on it is notice that it shows up in the same line here with sales orders and purchase orders. Those three items mean they're non-posting, and what that means is you can create an estimate for a customer all day long, but if they never ask you to do the job, it doesn't really affect your books other than you're going to run special reports on estimates to see those. What I wanna do now is go ahead and click on the estimate icon to show you how all of this works. This is your estimate screen. You'll notice the first thing it wants to know is who is your customer, and if you're using jobs, you'll wanna choose the job. Always, 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 when you're using jobs, choose the job underneath and not the main customer. If you choose the main customer, reports will say other. I'm gonna use Tom Allen. Notice he has a kitchen remodel job set up. I wanna create a new job for this customer. I could click on add new, but let me show you a shortcut. I'm going to choose my customer name, and at the end of the name, I'm gonna put a colon, no space, and then I'm going to put in the name of the job, and this is going to be a pool fence. What's going to happen now is if I hit the tab key or the enter key to leave the field, it will tell me that pool fence is not in the customer job list, and I'll just quick add it. Now you'll notice that those two jobs are now underneath the customer, Tom Allen, in this case. The next thing QuickBooks has a field for is the class. If you're using the class feature, you want to use it consistently because you want to run reports on classes. And remember that classes allow you to break down information into smaller segmenting for reporting purposes. I could run reports on all of my remodel jobs if I've chosen this class consistently throughout. We're going to talk about templates in a later module, but you have different templates for estimates that you can choose from. The next thing I want to point out is the date. This is going to be the date you're creating this estimate. It will default to today's date unless you've changed it. The next thing is notice the estimate number. Anything that's numbered in QuickBooks will start with the number one and number sequentially until you change it. If you want this to be a totally different number, then just change that to whatever number you want and it will number the rest of them after that sequentially. Here's the customer's name and address that you would set up when you set up the customer. If you happen to realize that they have a different address or maybe you left out a zip code or whatever, you can go ahead and type it in. And what will happen is when you get ready to save it, it will ask you if you wanna save it permanently in their record. If you're shipping items to a job site, you might wanna go ahead and add a new ship to address if you don't have one set up or you can go ahead and put the same information over here. 
Let's go down in the body of the estimate so that I can show you how this works. And we'll start with the first line. You want to click on the first line underneath where it says item. And you'll see an arrow appears that gives you a list of the different items that you've set up in QuickBooks. This list will not be here automatically. You have to set it up. For now, we're just going to use some of the items in this list. And later, we're going to go through and I'll show you how this list works. Let's go ahead and choose labor. We're going to say labor for installing fence. And we'll say that it took us 10 hours and we charge $50 an hour. Notice you have a column that says amount and a column that says markup. The amount column is automatically calculated from the quantity times the cost. The markup column is there because you have the ability in an estimate to mark up any line item a dollar amount or a percentage. I'll do one of each to show you how this works. Let's mark this one up 35 and I'm going to put the percent sign there so it knows. And notice it calculated for me when I tabbed across. The last column that you see here that says tax, that has to do with sales tax. It means that this particular item, because it's a service in this case, is not subject to sales tax. Now we skipped over one, that's the unit of measurement right here. If you have an item that you sell by the yard, by the foot, maybe by the case, you can set that up when you set up the item itself and then you can choose that from the drop down list. Let's choose one more item. I want to go ahead and choose a screen door. And we'll say that we are going to have one of these installed. And you can see that it brought in a cost automatically because that was set up when the item was set up. But you can certainly type over that. I'll just go ahead and say $175. And notice the markup. We're going to get rid of that and just mark this up $200. That markup is there automatically because you'll see again when we learn to set up items that if you have a physical item and you tell QuickBooks on average how much you buy it for and on average how much you sell it for, then it creates that markup automatically, which you saw that we could type right over. And you can keep adding as many light items to this as you like. A couple things to notice at the bottom right. It does give you your subtotal. It gives you the total of the markup. It also gives you the total of your taxes, if you have any. And you can see here we did have tax on our physical item, which was the screen door. And then it gives you the grand total down at the bottom. A couple of other things, if you look back over to the left, there is an area for a customer message. There are some generic ones that are set up automatically. You can see those. You can also add one if you wanted to. I'll just go ahead and choose this one. There's also a place for a memo, and you could say anything you want here. We'll just say new job, even though we know it's a new job. And it has a customer tax code, meaning the customer is a taxable customer. Something else I want to point out, if you go back over to the right-hand side, you'll see this gray area. There's an arrow that points back to the left. It says show history. I'll just click on that. And what this does is if your customer already has a history, you can see the open balance, any estimates they already have out there, just some different things about this customer and job. And if you want to look at some transactions that would already be here, you can click this tab. Usually this area is open automatically. You can hide it by choosing the hide history. And now here you can choose show history. And that's how that would work. Sometimes I just keep that closed unless I'm really wanting to see something on that list there. That gives you a real quick overview of how to go ahead and set up an estimate. What I'd like to do now is go ahead and stop the video here. I want you to go over to part two. And what we'll do in part two is look at some of the options you have up at the top when you're creating estimates. Hey there, welcome back to QuickBooks Desktop 2023. This is Cindy. We're working in section four right now. We're going down the list and we're talking about all things related to customers and jobs. We've already started talking about estimates in part one. Let's just continue some of the other options available when you're creating estimates. This is part two. Let's go ahead and head over to QuickBooks and we will keep going.
In part one, we covered how to actually create this estimate. What I want to do now is talk about a lot of your options you have up here at the top. And a lot of these options you're going to see in other windows as well. For example, when we get to the invoicing, you're going to have a lot of the same options. Let's start under the main tab. The first thing you'll notice is there is a left and right arrow and an option that says find. If you're looking for an estimate, you can use the left or right arrows to take you backwards or forwards in the estimates. It's not going to take you to invoices or some other part of QuickBooks. It's only going back and forth through the estimates here. If you can't find what you're looking for, just hit the find option. And now you can search again just for estimates. You can search by the customer if you want to look for a particular estimate number. Maybe you have an amount. You can see some of those options here. Once you fill in your criteria, you would hit find and it would search for you. I'm going to hit cancel. The next thing you're going to see is an option that says new, and this will give you a new blank estimate. This is really the same exact thing as if you went to the bottom right and you see the button that says save and new. That's the same option. Next, you're going to have the save option. If you're working on this and you just don't want to lose any of what you've put in, you can go ahead and just hit save at this point. There's also a down arrow. That way, if you want to save this as just a regular estimate in QuickBooks, which is the same as hitting the button, you could do that. Or you can save it as a PDF file. Maybe you intend to email this to someone, but you have those choices. If you want to delete this estimate, here's where you delete it. You can also create a copy. Create a copy allows you to create another estimate that might be very similar to this one. Maybe you just need to make a few changes. You could have two, and that way you don't have to retype everything. And then memorize. We're going to go through this in a later module. But what this actually allows you to do is if you have an estimate or any kind of form, maybe an invoice, then you can go ahead and memorize it, meaning that you can have QuickBooks put this in automatically for you. And then if you need to make some changes, you can do that. You also have the ability to mark this estimate as inactive. Let's say you had a situation where you had a potential customer and you create an estimate for them and then you never hear back. It doesn't hurt just to leave this here, but if you mark it as inactive, it won't show up in your reports. The next thing you can do is you can print this estimate. If you wanted to preview it to see what it's going to look like, it would look just like this. You can see it's rather plain. It does say estimate at the top. You do have the ability to customize any of your forms, including estimates. We'll do that in a later module. I'll go ahead and hit close here. Under print again, you also have the ability to print an envelope. And this is where Microsoft Word comes in handy. You would actually click here and it would pull up Word and it would have an envelope ready to go that you could print out. And then notice you can also save this as a PDF. Next, you're going to see the email option. You can actually email this estimate, or if you had a batch, you could email the ones that you created and you've checked to actually email later. Here's where you attach a file. It could be that you have a bill from a vendor and it's related to this estimate. You could go ahead and attach that here. You could scan it and attach it, and that way you have easy access to it. Let me just mention a couple things right over here. These are all related to estimates and we haven't quite yet gotten to these yet, but one of the things that happens is after you estimate a job, you'll want to send an invoice to your customer to get paid. If you happen to be here, you can go ahead and create that invoice from here, but chances are you're not gonna be on this screen when you're ready to create your invoice. If that's the case, you would just flip back over to your home screen and create your invoice right here. You also can create a sales order and a purchase order, and we're going to get to those in a later module. Just to mention the start project, Intuit does have a software called MavenLink, and it's more of a project management type software. You can actually try it out for 30 days for free. But after that, you would have to pay for it. And this is a great way to just go ahead and test it out and see if you like it. And all of that is under the main tab. You're going to spend most of your time under the main tab 
However, let's go to formatting and see what's here. Here's where you're going to preview your estimate. We've already seen that. We are going to talk about your templates in a later module, and that's going to be this list right over here. Here's where you can check your spelling. You want to make sure you always check your spelling before you send this out. The line you're clicked on down here, you can actually insert a line above it. You can actually delete the line you're clicked on, or if you had a line you wanted to copy, you could do that. And then the custom design has more to do with actually designing your templates. Okay, a couple more tabs, send slash ship. This is where you're going to be able to prepare documents using Microsoft Word, and this will allow you to do mail merges. You can see you can create an email. You can prepare a letter that would just be a Microsoft Word document where it merges some of this information in. And here you can customize estimate letters that are specific for estimating. This tab here is going to allow you to run some reports. You've got some quick reports, transaction history reports, and then you'll see that you can run a report that's an estimate by job, an estimate versus actual, and then an item price list. And the last tab is search. If you really want to search, you could type in some words that you know might be in your estimate there, and then you can search up or down in this estimate, meaning that if it's a really long one and maybe had several hundred lines, you could search up and down, and this is fairly new in this version of QuickBooks. Like I mentioned, you're going to stay under the main tab most of the time, and these options are going to be generic across other forms in QuickBooks as well. That's an overview of how estimates work in QuickBooks. I'm going to go ahead and save and close this at the bottom, and we're going to wrap up this particular video. And one quick thing. All this says is I changed something over in the address for Tom Allen. Do you want to change that permanently in his record? I'm going to say yes, and it will save and close it for me. Now that estimate is done, and we can move on in QuickBooks. Let's go ahead now and move over to the next video, which is going to be invoicing from your estimates, part one. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.